بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. The last topic in the chapter on unicast routing is Border Gateway Protocol (BGP). In this case, we are using Border Gateway Protocol version four. And BGP has got two variations. Okay, it's got a variation for external to to find inter-domain routing, which is called external BGP. So this type of BGP will be installed on the borders on the routers at the borders. Okay, at the at the borders of the system. And then you have the other variation of BGP called internal BGP, IBGP. And this will be installed on all routers in the network, in, in, internal, external, all of them will have IBGP. So we here, we're looking at a sample internet with four autonomous systems. We have AS1, 2, 3, and 4. These autonomous systems are stub AS. Okay? Because they're similar to the stub networks that we've seen in, in OSPF. In this type, it's at the end, okay? These networks, these autonomous systems are at the end. Information does not flow through them, whereas this autonomous system is a transit autonomous system because the information is flowing through this autonomous system to go to other places. So now we're going to see how we make use of eBGP and iBGP. As mentioned earlier, eBGP is used for interdomain routing and iBGP is used for internal or intradomain routing. So eBGP is now established or the session, eBGP session is established between the different border routers, okay? So we have the link between R1 and R5, R2 and R6, R4 and R9. And this link is a reliable link using TCP. The routers in this case are called the BGP peers, okay? Now let's look at what information is exchanged. At point one, okay, for this point in the network, we will know that if we want to reach network N8 and N9, the next router we use is R5 and which is in AS2. If we want to go from AS2 to these different other networks, we know that to reach networks N1, N2, N3, and N4, right? This is N1, N2, N3, and N4. We can, we have to go through R1. Okay, this is what these lines mean. So now we are coming to know about the contents of other autonomous systems through these border routers. Then we have for this side, if we want to know if we want to reach N1, N2, N3, or N4, we have router R4. 
which is in AS1. And if we want to reach N13, N14, N15 from this side, then we have to go R9, which is in AS4. And the same thing will take place for this side. Now next, we look at the internal. Okay, we look at, so we now looked at the external. How do we externally come to know what's happening? Now we will also look at internal. Okay, so in this case, we are saying that all these three routers, R3, R4, and R2, if any one of these routers want to, wants to go to N8 or N9, wants to send information, sorry, to N8 or N9, then their next point is R1, and the information is going to go from AS1 to AS2. This is what it means. At point 2, if any of the routers R1, R2, or R3 want to go to access, want to access networks N13, N14, or N15, which is in AS4, then our router for this is R4, and the information is going from AS1 to AS4. For R6, if routers R8 and R7 want to send anything over to the other side, which is networks N1, N2, N3, or N4, then our point of contact in this system is R6, and information is going from AS3 to AS1. So now we are gradually building the table. We have no BGP, IBGP connection for these sessions because all the networks here are connected to the same router. So once we reach this router, we can access any of the networks because it's a stub link, a stub network. However, for a network like this, we would need n times n minus 1 by 2 IBGP sessions, okay, to connect to the different routers. Now we are finalizing the paths. R1, this is R1. We are saying, if I want to go to, if I want to send information to N8 or N9, my next router is R5 and the path is AS1 to AS2. Remember, when we are talking about eBGP, eBGP will only deal with border routers. It will not deal with internal routers. These internal routers will be employing intradomain routing protocols and not interdomain. And e eBGP is mainly interdomain. And at the moment, we are looking at eBGP. Similarly, if we, for R1, if we want to go to N10, N11, and N12, then the next router we have to send information to is R2 in the path and the information is going from AS1 to AS3. If we want to go from R1 to N13, 14, or 15, the next router for us is R4, and we are going from AS1 to AS4. And similarly, we have for R2 and R3. R5, R4, and R6, R9, R8, and R7. So all routers now have the BGP path tables ready. Now we're going to look at the forwarding tables. Okay. And this forwarding table is the final result. 
it's a combination of EBGP and IBGP. So you have to be careful about the number of hops. Okay, now watch this carefully. We have the table for R1. Okay, table for R1. R1 to N1, it's, uh, it, it's in the same network, so it's using intradomain. There's no next router and the cost is 1. N4, R4 to N4. Sorry, I'm sorry, R1 to N4. R1 to N4. The next router we use is R4. And the hops are 1, 2. So these are for the routers that we are looking at inside. Now we are looking at N8. N8 is outside here. It's not in the same network as R1. It's not in the same autonomous system. It is in N8 is in AS2. So in this case, it's eBGP that's being used. And for eBGP, we only consider the distance from the router to the router inside that autonomous system only. And we don't go beyond that because the assumption is that after this point, it will be the intradomain protocol that will take charge. So if we want to go to N8 from R1, our next router is R5, but the number of hops is only one because we have sent the information to this and we have left it there. Now it is R5's responsibility to further take it to N8. If we are going to N14 from R1, this is N14. Our next router to use will be R4, R4, and the number of hops will be 1, 2. That's it. We leave it at R9, and R9 will later on take care of how the information should go to N14. So this is how eBGP works. We'll, if we will take another example, let's say for router R4. So this is R4. And we're saying we want to go from R4 to N10. Okay, R4 to N10. So for that, the next router we will use is R3. Right, R3. And the number of hops will be 1, 2, 3. So there you go, 3 hops. So this is how BGP works. When we make the final tables, they will be a combination of IBGP and EBGP together. So with this, we come to an end for unicast routing protocols.